Welcome back to Inspiring Builds. I'm Dan, and today I'm going to show you how to build a yard tool storage rack. Here is the cluttered area prior. The goal was to get all of the tools organized and off the ground, as well as not take up a substantial amount of wall space. The inspiration for this build came from the one I built at my home as shown here. This setup can fit over 30 tools and only a four foot wide area. The cool part is it can be customized to fit your space. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any of these tutorials. Start by sweeping out the area you will be working in. Next, gather all of your yard tools and lay them out how you would stack them. I'm grouping them by like use to avoid handling multiple tools to get to a tool you need. I'm also doing it by season, for example, putting snow shovels in the front in winter and rakes in the back. Lastly, I'm laying out the long tools for the top rack and short tools for the bottom rack. This storage rack was built with only one 2x10 and three 2x4s all 8 feet long. The 2x10 used to mount to the wall was simply cut in half and the three 2x4s was cut using the cutlass optimizer shown to create 12 rack hooks. You can cut them all the same, however on this build, one hook was cut shorter on the lower rack to create more space when entering and exiting the garage. Before starting, ensure to wear proper PPE. I wear safety glasses and ear protection when using a miter saw. I always trim the ends to ensure the lumber is square and that I have a clean cut. This is a miter saw hack to maximize efficiency. When doing repetitive cuts, as you will when cutting 12 rack hooks, it cuts down on a ton of time using a stop block. It's simple as you can use a scrap piece of wood and clamp it down as shown, but I would make sure you have a small cutaway in the corner. I cut one end of all 12 pieces at a 15 degree angle so the tools would hang slanted slightly towards the wall. The other end I cut at 45 degrees in the middle just for aesthetics that is optional. The lumber being cut here was for another build so the cuts are shorter, but the same concept applies. It's what happens when your father-in-law enjoys staying busy and wants to make some cuts on his own. I used an R3 Craig jig and set it up on the one and a half inch jig setting as I'm going to use two and a half inch pocket hole screws to anchor the two by fours. I lined up the hooks in pairs the same way I was going to install them. I clamped down the 15 degree angle side and drilled two pocket hole screws on the outside of each hook. I'm going to speed this up as the process is the same for all of the hooks. Now if I could really work this fast, my honeydew list would be much shorter. Locate and mark the studs as you want to mount the 2x10 into two studs. I used a level and marked a line 50 and a quarter inches up from the floor that would be used to line up the top of the 2x10 on the lower rack. I used 3 inch number 9 multi-purpose screws with a star head that requires no pre-drilling as well as it has a fast bite tip and counter sinks, making them a quick go-to for me. With a 2x10 being pretty heavy, I marked the stud locations on the 2x10 and drove in about a half inch of the 3 inch screws so I could quickly drive them in when the 2x10 is held against the wall. This is a simple step with two people. Align it with the mark we made earlier on the wall, check for level, and drive in the screws. Solid. Yeah. Solid as a rock. Yep, what he said. Repeat the same process for the top. I measured 96 and 3 quarter inches from the floor to the bottom of the 2x10. Mark out your hooks as shown with a 2 inch space between the racks. Test fit before installing the hooks. Here is the first pair of hooks installed with the hooks sitting flush with the bottom of the 2x10. I will show how these are installed on the bottom rack when I'm not on a ladder. I did another test fit with the widest tool placed on the hook. Now you can see why I separated the long tools as I wanted the handles to hit the bottom 2x10 to avoid beating up the wall. Moving along with the second pair of hooks installed. 
Now that the top is complete, we can mark out the best place to fit the hooks on the bottom. For installation, I use two and a half inch pocket hole screws and drive them in about a half inch as I did with installing the 2x10 to the wall. Line up the hook with your marks on the 2x10 and make it flush with the bottom of the 2x10. Ensure you're square and drive in the pocket hole screws until the hook is flush and sturdy. I really appreciate you watching. If you like this video, I have another one queued up for you in the corner that you'd probably like as well. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, comment, share, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I release new videos.